Greetings, I'm Dr. David Gersten. This video is about dopamine, expectation, and romance. Specifically, it's about the fact that the power of dopamine drives your love life. Romantic honeymoon love is dopamine-driven. Long-term love involves a different set of neurotransmitters. Dopamine is thought to be all about reward. The media and countless video channels have made dopamine sound sexy, but it's not that sexy. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that plays a role in pleasure, motivation, learning, movement, expectation, and surprise. Dopamine transmission is essential for creating a state of motivation to seek goals, plan for those goals, and to maintain the focus to reach those goals. Before diving into dopamine's role in romance, I will first share the science. Without the science, the rest of the video wouldn't make sense. To convey the messages, I use text, words, and music. These music videos will be short segments of songs that relate to different phases of romantic love and long-term affectionate love. It's one thing to provide you with factual information, but music reaches us on an emotional level. The music videos in this dopamine video are shortened versions except for one full-length song. I have cut and spliced together each video, and some of these music videos begin with a chorus. Each music video relates to a specific aspect of love and romance. Dopamine provides the energy of desire that fuels passionate love. Once I've explained the basic science, this video will explain why romance often falls apart after 12 to 18 months. It's not about a failure of communication, but it is definitely about dopamine. By the end of this video, many of you will have discovered why romantic relationships often ended too soon and what must be done to turn romantic love into forever love. Dopamine helps us take action to attain something we want or to avoid something bad. People with low levels of dopamine are less likely to work for things. Dopamine helps us focus on a goal and then attain it. Low dopamine is associated with low motivation. Dopamine is part of everyday interactions and emotions, and it also plays a role in peak performance, goal-seeking behavior, creativity, and romance. A neurotransmitter is a chemical messenger that carries a signal from one neuron or nerve cell to the next nerve cell. That neurotransmitter leaves the end of one nerve, the axon, and enters the space between two neurons called a synapse. Dopamine then connects with receptors on the adjoining neuron. Dopamine became known as a pleasure and reward neurotransmitter, but that's not exactly what it is. It's been described as the sexiest substance on Earth, and countless books and magazines talk about the sexy-sounding neurotransmitter. The first research on dopamine involved rats that were given cocaine. That was not a good model for understanding dopamine. A better study was one in which rabbits were given a food pellet. The sight of that food pellet caused a rise in brain dopamine levels. But if the rabbits were given a food pellet at the exact same time every day, the dopamine response disappeared. Novelty fosters dopamine release. Predictability decreases dopamine release. In another animal study, when dopamine levels were decreased, the animals lost interest and motivation to eat. What do rabbit studies tell us about romantic love in human beings? Let's keep going. We have two main ways of being when it comes to neurotransmitters. There are those things we want but don't have. They are in the far away category or what is called extrapersonal space. We cannot touch something that is far away. That goal or desire does not exist in the present. It exists in the future and at a distance and in what we imagine. Far away experience involves what you cannot touch without moving. Before explaining more about far away experience, let's watch our first music video, which is Fire in My Soul, a song that I wrote. 
It is a passionate, dopamine-driven song. I have tried unsuccessfully to contact the man who sang this song. I will call him V in this video. You are the fire in my soul. Sometimes our love burns so bright, there is nothing left but light. And this fire in the night melts your heart. Dopamine, which is all about pursuit and anticipation, drives us to always want more and to desire, plan, reach out, and finally have that desired object or person. But once we have that desired object or person, the dopamine surge is over. Dopamine helps us get motivated to attain a goal or experience. It also helps us plan, focus, and keep moving forward until the goal is reached. But the thrilling anticipation caused by dopamine vanishes when the future becomes the present, when fantasy becomes reality, and when the thing we are striving to attain is now in our hands. Let me explain the nine steps in romantic love. This will help you understand why each song is in this video. Step one, dopamine enters the picture when we are not in a relationship, but we want to be. Step two, that person decides he's going to start dating. Step three, he finds someone he would like to date and thinks about a plan. How is he going to get her attention? Hopefully that plan will result in a date. Step four, they have dated and both are happy with how things went. Step five, they fall in honeymoon romantic love and have passionate sex. Step six, a year goes by. One or both of them start to wonder if it's really the ideal relationship. They're not sure anymore. This change is caused by a fall in dopamine levels 12 to 18 months into the relationship. Step seven, they are no longer feeling that being in love state and they talk about ending the relationship. Step eight, they decide to vacation in Acapulco, Mexico to rekindle the romance. That will work for a while. Step nine, it's over. Each of these nine steps is dopamine driven. Every song in this video that I have labeled dopamine driven relates to one of these nine phases of romantic love. The end of dopamine driven love does not mean that your love affair is over. Things in the here and now are things we experience in the present. Here and now experience is literally about things we can reach out and touch, enjoy, and savor right now. Our five senses are engaged. We can hold and touch the thing or person. When we are in a here and now mindset, our brain activity mainly involves serotonin and oxytocin. Oxytocin which is a hormone that acts like a neurotransmitter, has been called the love hormone and the cuddle hormone. It's made by our brain's hypothalamus and then released into the bloodstream by the pituitary gland. In the brain, oxytocin functions as a neurotransmitter. In the here and now, serotonin, endorphins, and oxytocin 
provide a sense of pleasure from emotion and physical sensations. Serotonin, another here and now neurotransmitter, creates a sense of safety, serenity, and satiety. The next music video clip is Goddess of Love, composed and recorded by Dove Linkhorn. He wrote this here and now song after 20 years of marriage and created a music video of this song as a gift to his wife for their 50th wedding anniversary. What does it matter when you go, the toys all stay? And when you're lying on your deathbed, the only question will be, Here I am at the top of the mountain The goddess of love Here I am at the top of the mountain Dopamine is not about pleasure and reward, and it's not just about desire and pursuit. It is about anticipation of a goal or reward. There are two dopamine pathways. When the dopamine desire circuit is engaged, we are energized, optimistic, and enthusiastic. We are almost ready to begin the pursuit of a goal. But the dopamine desire circuit needs some help. The dopamine control circuit channels the energy of the dopamine desire circuit. The control circuit, which involves our brain's frontal lobes, plans, analyzes, and imagines in order to move the energy of the dopamine desire circuit in a more focused way toward the best outcome. Let's say that you are shy, but interested in dating a woman who you don't know very well. The dopamine desire circuit fires up so that you really want to date her. Dopamine energizes your intention, and the dopamine control circuit channels that energy and helps you develop the best strategy. Our long-term dopamine level is called phasic. During phasic dopamine release, our dopaminergic neurons fire three to five times per second. When the dopamine desire circuit is activated, neurons that release dopamine fire 20 to 30 times per second. This fast dopamine release of an attained reward is called tonic. The key to understanding dopamine has to do with reward, prediction, error. In plain English, here's what that means. If we want something that is in the faraway space and which is out there in time, we have an expectation. At some time in the future, we may attain that goal. When we attain a goal, if that goal or experience is greater or better than we expected, we have a large release of dopamine. If the experience is exactly what we expected, there is no dopamine release. And if the result is less than we expected, there is a reduction in dopamine release. Here's a mundane example of reward prediction error in everyday life. A woman is going for a leisurely walk and she stumbles across a restaurant that she has never been in before. She walks in, orders, and enjoys her meal. She loves the environment. The food is great, the service is great, and that restaurant has exceeded her expectation. The positive surprise will cause a large release of dopamine. She begins going to the same restaurant every day. She raves about it with her friends. But after a month or two, she's used to the restaurant. The novelty is worn off. There is no anticipation, no surprise, nothing new, and there is no goal or reward to reach. Hence, there is no dopamine release. She is no longer in love with the restaurant, but she likes it. The dopamine response has ended. She is going to find a new restaurant. Dopamine is not simply about a reward for something good or desirable. It's a response to whether the goal or experience exceeds our expectation. 
Dopamine is released from brain cells not just when you have had a pleasant experience or reached a desired goal. Dopamine is released when that experience is better than we had expected and when the good result was a surprise. Similarly, you get a reduction in dopamine release when something is unexpectedly bad, unexpectedly worse than we had anticipated. Let's say that you have gone on your first date with a woman you have been pursuing in your imagination. Now it's real. If your first date exceeds your expectation, you will have a large burst of dopamine. If your date meets your expectation, there will be no dopamine release. If the date was worse than you expected, your dopamine will decrease, and it's likely that you won't want a second date. Dr. Daniel Lieberman and physicist Michael Long co-wrote an excellent book called The Molecule of More. According to Dr. Lieberman, dopamine wants more. For dopamine, enough is never enough. If you are dopamine-driven, you always are looking for something better, a higher income, a better house, a faster car, a more prestigious job, and a more beautiful or handsome partner. Dopamine is about more fame, more money, more, more, more. Dopamine is important, but it's the beginning of the love story, not the end of the story. Passionate romantic love is driven by dopamine. This phase of love is exciting, idealized, and it's about the future. It's about the next great thing that will happen in this perfect, boundless romance. Dopamine is involved in the beginning and the ending of romance. Dopamine is the neurotransmitter that gets us motivated and keeps us motivated. It's the neurotransmitter that motivates people to fall in love. When people fall in love, everything seems perfect. Our partner is perfect, at least in our eyes and in our mind. The honeymoon phase involves lust driven biochemistry, and that is about dopamine. We are obsessed with our partner in this phase of love. In romantic love, high dopamine suppresses the here and now neurotransmitters. When our dopamine is activated by the thrill of romance, we see endless possibilities. But when the person or thing we have been striving for with eager anticipation is suddenly in our hands, we move into the here and now, and dopamine levels fall. Dopamine is a great assistance for things out in the future, things we are striving to attain. Dopamine helps us find a new job and new romance. But once we have those things, we need to move to the here and now neurotransmitters, serotonin and oxytocin. Things are so great in the honeymoon phase of romance that a couple might get engaged or married quickly. But far too often, the romance fades in 12 to 18 months. People try to recreate the being in love feeling when it starts to fade. They wonder what is wrong with their partner or what is wrong with themselves. They might get in couples therapy. But the problem is not about either partner. It's about the fact that after 12 to 18 months of romance, the dopamine high goes away. When romantic love starts to fade, dopamine drives us to leave the, quote, failed relationship, unquote, and get back to more dopamine. But serotonin and oxytocin tell us to stay and work things out in the present moment. I wrote the song Mexican Nights as my attempt to revive a romantic relationship it was fading after about 18 months together. The singer, Michael T. Lawson, has been in country bands for decades. We've forgotten each other Won't take long to recover With the fruit of the vine We'll lose track of the time Let's get high on a Mexican night Let's get high on the Mexican night Where we'll fall from the bright neon lights of L.A. We'll be drifting away I'll be holding you tight till we're feeling 
feeling all right Let's get high on a Mexican night When the honeymoon phase of romance fades, it doesn't mean that a relationship should end. It does mean that people have to shift from romantic dopamine-driven love to present-time companionate love. Companionate love, also known as affectionate love, includes commitment, trust, affection, and a sense of safety. The term companionate sounds too scientific and remote for me. I like the term affectionate love. It is slow to develop, but can last a lifetime. Affectionate love lives in the here and now. Affectionate love does not involve dopamine. Faraway experience involves people and things we strive to attain, which is dopamine-driven. This change from faraway experience to here and now involves our day-to-day -day mundane realities. Oxytocin and serotonin are the two most important neurotransmitters in here and now love. When we are in a here and now experience, we learn to deeply understand each other to form a lasting bond. We learn to be open and vulnerable, to listen, to be patient, and to live and love in the moment. The affectionate love neurotransmitters flood the body as we move into the here and now of love. That state creates a sense of well-being, safety, and connection that is necessary for a lasting relationship. With here and now love, our neurotransmitters guide us to feel the pleasure of physical sensations and emotions. Here and now does not involve dopamine. Far too many romantic relationships end because the dopamine faded. Long-term affectionate love had not even had a chance yet, but it is a couple's only hope for long-term sustainable love. Not everyone has the same baseline levels of dopamine. High dopamine people tend to have chaotic relationships, and they move on to new romance when dopamine fades. Mick Jagger says he has had 4,000 lovers. That's about one new lover every week. Jagger is a very high dopamine person who never makes it to here and now love. When the high dopamine levels of new romance wears off, he moves on. Many people move on. Our prediction about a goal or reward is crucial to our understanding. If our experience of the goal is greater than we expected, we have a large release of dopamine. If the goal is the same as what we expected, there's no dopamine release. And if the goal turns out to be worse or less than we expected, there is a decrease in dopamine release. Reward prediction error means how far off was our prediction from the actual experience of the goal? In romantic, dopamine-driven love, we are constantly surprised because there is so much to discover about a new lover. Novelty, anticipation, and surprise cause high dopamine bursts. Long-term here and now relationships are fueled by serotonin and oxytocin. Dopamine fuels the short-term, the pursuit of romance, and dopamine gets us into bed. Testosterone fires up the desire. A man's baseline testosterone levels are rather stable, while a woman's testosterone levels peak on the 13th and 14th day of her menstrual cycle, the days when she is ovulating. Testosterone is not very picky. It creates a drive for sex in general, but not for a particular partner. With young people, sometimes sex with any one of the chosen gender will work just fine. During passionate sex, dopamine works together with testosterone. As sexual desire moves us into physical contact, the here and now neurotransmitters serotonin and oxytocin fire up. These neurotransmitters keep us in the present moment. Oxytocin and vasopressin, here and now neurotransmitters, suppress the release of testosterone. And this all leads to orgasm, which involves the here and now neurotransmitters endorphins, oxytocin, and vasopressin. 
With orgasm, dopamine release is shut off so that we can enjoy the sensations and emotions in the moment with that person. We also are using all of our five senses. Emotion and sensory experience are guided by here and now neurotransmitters. I've mentioned the main here and now neurotransmitters, serotonin and oxytocin. Now, let's take a look at all the here and now neurotransmitters, serotonin, oxytocin, vasopressin, and endorphins. I've mentioned a number of neurotransmitters and hormones that are involved in here and now affectionate love. Now, let's take a look at each of these one at a time. Oxytocin and vasopressin are the hormones most closely associated with here and now affectionate love. Men and women are influenced by oxytocin and vasopressin, but women are more sensitive to oxytocin and men are more sensitive to vasopressin. Oxytocin and vasopressin are about bonding, connection, and commitment. Oxytocin, the love hormone, provides feelings of pleasure from touch, affection, and connection. It is the main hormone associated with sexual arousal and orgasm. When oxytocin is released during orgasm, it deepens our emotional bond. Oxytocin helps a couple bond by helping to create trust, empathy, relaxation, fidelity, and healthy communication. Vasopressin is similar to oxytocin in terms of bonding and attachment. It helps a male select a mate and then stay committed to her for life. Vasopressin promotes monogamy. The pleasure of orgasm comes from endorphins and oxytocin. Endorphins, our natural painkiller, help us feel soothed, peaceful, blissful, and secure. They produce a surge of pleasure during orgasm. As dopamine-driven romance fades, the here-and-now neurotransmitter serotonin rises. Here-and-now neurotransmitters involve what we are feeling right now. Low levels of serotonin can cause anxiety and depression. Healthy serotonin levels create a stable mood and a sense of serenity, safety, and satiety. Satiety means completely satisfied or gratified beyond capacity. These are here and now qualities. Our emotions are about the here and now. Affectionate here and now love involves a complex cocktail of neurotransmitters and hormones. Once we've gotten in bed and are touching, kissing, and are very present, we move deeper into the here and now neurotransmitters. Endorphins, oxytocin, and vasopressin continue from orgasm into the afterglow. After orgasm, there is a surge of serotonin, a here and now neurotransmitter, which creates that sense of serenity, safety, and satiety. Here and now love requires a shift in our attitudes and beliefs about sex. Affectionate here and now lovemaking lasts much longer, is slower, sensual, and is about being rather than doing. Our next music video segment, which I wrote and sang, is Touch of a Lover, which involves the kind of here and now lovemaking that I just mentioned. When you feel the touch of your lover Is it soft as a feather Brushing across your skin Do you feel your soul discovered Are you most alive When you're lying next to him The touch of a lover His gentle caress So slow and unhurried For he wants no less Than to enter your heart So you'll never want him when you feel the real touch of a lover 
Why is Touch of a Lover a here and now song? Here are three reasons. Number one, it's about physical sensations and emotion. Number two, it's about being very present in the moment. And number three, there is no urgency, no expectation, no striving, no goals, no thoughts about the future, and there's no dopamine-driven desire. If you are still in dopamine-driven romantic love that is fading, and you have not proceeded to here and now neurotransmitters, you probably want to get back to the thrill of the chase. You now know that your romance faded after 12 to 18 months because dopamine levels dropped. You now have two choices. Number one, leave your lover and find a new one. I'm out of here, flying high. I'm out of here, no tears to cry. Goodbye, goodbye. I'm out of here tonight. If you're not going to leave your lover, your second choice is to learn how to foster and appreciate affectionate love. Part of the shift is psychology. Part is biology. Long-term love involves higher levels of the neurotransmitters serotonin and oxytocin. Oxytocin rises during sex, orgasm, and the afterglow. And oxytocin helps people connect and bond with each other. In dopamine-driven romantic love, there is no increase in oxytocin. But our long-term, here-and-now affectionate love requires higher levels of oxytocin. Dopamine is not the molecule of pleasure. It's all about anticipation and expectation, about striving to attain something we don't yet have. Low dopamine causes low motivation. But higher dopamine fires up our desires for new goals and gets us motivated to reach that distant goal. But when you reach that goal, arriving far away from right here where you started, dopamine drops, and you must do something other than chase another dream. It's time to move to the here and now, to connect with your lover through physical sensations and emotions, and to connect through affectionate love. Let's say you're hiking and you want to reach the top of a beautiful distant mountain. Dopamine fires up the climb, but when you reach the summit, dopamine drops. You are less interested in the top of the mountain as your eyes gaze out at the beautiful valley below. That valley below is like romantic love. When you reach the valley below, you will soon want to be somewhere else. Dopamine-driven goals are exciting but not lasting. Dopamine always says, I want more. Our brains are wired to desire novelty, the unexpected. Dopamine causes us to look to the future where all of our hopes, aspirations, fantasies, and potential dreams exist. But when the excitement starts to fade, we will chase something or someone new. To enjoy the people and things in our life, we must transcend dopamine chemistry, which involves the faraway space. We then need to move into here and now, present time neurotransmitters, which are serotonin and oxytocin. It's great to be motivated and enthusiastic about having goals. It is also important to be able to enjoy the fruit of that quest in the present moment. If our friend in the restaurant had been able to really savor the food in the moment and had continued to enjoy the brief conversations with a waitress in the moment, she could have moved into here and now biochemistry and then enjoyed the restaurant indefinitely. Similarly, remember that romantic love fades when dopamine levels drop. At that point, we must move into here and now love if we want a relationship to last. Short-term, dopamine-driven, passionate love is a good thing, but we need to transform it into the present when the honeymoon biochemistry fades. We need to know how to communicate with our partner. 
Here and now love only exists in the present moment. Please do not think that dopamine-driven love is a bad thing. Without dopamine, we don't get to long-term love. Without dopamine, we lack the desire to attain any goal. Our last song is I Owe This Dream to You. Denny Bales wrote and recorded the music, and he sang the vocal. I wrote the lyrics. This is the only full-length song in this dopamine video. At one point, a well-known music producer wanted to produce Bales and said to him, I want to produce you, but you'll have to make some changes to be more commercial. Bales was not interested in compromising his artistic gifts for money. Enjoy, I owe this dream to you. Thank you for watching. Remember that love involves dopamine-driven, faraway romantic love, as well as here and now affectionate love. We need both kinds of love in order to experience long-term love. Future videos will explain how to grow and sustain long-term here and now love while adding some periodic spice or seasoning from dopamine. You will learn how dopamine and the here and now neurotransmitter serotonin and oxytocin can work together sometimes. I am most grateful to the musicians who contributed to this video, Dove Linkhorn, Denny Bales, Michael T. Lawson, and V. In the space below this video, I have provided links to Dove Linkhorn, 
who wrote and sang Goddess of Love. This dopamine video will be at least a two-part series. If you like this video, please fire up your dopamine chemistry for a minute so that you can like, share, subscribe, and press the notification button. Have a great day. Thank you.